Hey, Tokenmetrics family, welcome back to the 100X show, and we're back at it again. I'm Ian Bellina, your host, also founder and CEO of Tokenmetrics and general partner at Tokenmetrics Ventures. And this time we have the pleasure of being joined by Yuri, founder of uh, Wallchain, an MEV project. Uh, TM Ventures has invested, we'll also cover this as part of the Hidden Gems report as part of our research at Tokenmetrics. Yuri, welcome on the show. How are you? Oh, yeah, good, good. So happy to be here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so happy to tell you our story, the story of Wallchain and uh, how it was founded. So Wallchain was founded by my co-founder, Max, and me. Uh, I met Max many years ago uh, at uni when I was doing my master in computer science and Max was doing his PhD in machine learning. Since then, we went through Google, Meta, Grammarly, and a bit more than two years ago, uh, I went through Y Combinator. Uh, then I started NFT live streaming startup. It was uh, an NFT live streaming auctions platform for NFT creators. And uh, yeah, while running those NFT auctions, me and Max, we were exploring DeFi, trying different things here and there. And uh, one of the things we decided to try is MEV. So uh, that was kind of switch from our uh, Web2 uh, Web background. We co-founded a few companies in Web2, worked at the uh, corporations like Google and Meta. And then we got into like DeFi and uh, have, having fun in MEV. So we were running our bots, uh, MEV bots, and we quickly found that it's extremely competitive space. It was hard to outbeat other bots. We didn't usually win, and we were, we were kind of stuck of uh, generating, those, generating those strategies and trying to outbeat other bots. And it looked kind of in, impossible to outbeat other bots. Now, Yuri, could you maybe just kind of explain MEV and why people use bots for those maybe who are not too familiar with the concept? Sure, yeah, bring, bring some context about MEV. Uh, so the term means like maximal extracted value. And what it means in general is like what value can be extracted from the information flow. Even like here right now we talk, we have a conversation and this conversation can bring value to someone. Imagine if before this video is getting published on YouTube, YouTube would sell this information to someone. That sounds crazy, isn't it? And it's, that's actually what happens in DeFi. That, that's what the MEV space is. And it cannot be sold like right away by some centralized entity like YouTube that we kind of all trust that they would not sell this information, that uh, they follow the US regulations. In DeFi, it's kind of different. And uh, the best approach is to extract that value and share this value back to the originator. Uh, we can also uh, bring the analogy from traditional finance, which is like Robinhood and payment for the order flow to Citadel. 80% of the Robinhood revenue consists of the MEV, of the payment for the order flow they get from trading firms. So that's what... So does that mean thing. basically like a, a, a fund can basically use that to trade against whatever information they're getting and basically make money? Exactly, yeah. A fund a, get information of the order flow, what kind of uh, is user activity, what are they buying, what are they selling, under what conditions, and they uh, make their trades uh, strategies based on that. That's uh, how MEV works uh, nowadays. Most of that money is given to some third parties, like, like searchers. And uh, we entered that space in 2021. And uh, even at that moment, it was uh, pretty competitive. And we were not able to outbeat other bots in most of the cases. So we were thinking of coming out with some sort of solutions that would help us to outbeat other bots. To outperforms them and get value from users. So we, we, we've taken a look at solutions that existed at that time and other solutions. They were reordering user transactions and putting MEV transactions before or after the user. The solution we came up with was instead of putting MEV transaction before or after the user transaction, we wanted to get inside to the transaction. Once we are inside to the transaction, we are always guaranteed to be ahead of any other MEV bot or any other MEV solution and, and uh, capture the value first to the user. And uh, we would be also able to give this value back to the user. So this could be even healthy for, for the community. Now, how does that work? How do you get inside the transaction? Yeah, so that's the question. How do we get inside the transaction? And to get inside the transaction, we need to integrate with protocols who create those transactions. So we reached out to a range of protocols, a range of DEXs offering our like integration some of them gave us positive feedback and uh, we integrated and launched with a range of DEXs, including Diffin Network, Apes, uh, Baby Dodge, Wix, and uh, we have still a huge list of 
uh, upcoming integrations that we are going to announce soon. Yeah. Okay, that's fascinating. So, so basically the project or the developers integrate you directly into the code with whatever transactions they're executing. So nobody, no other MEV bot can come in and, and basically extract that value. Yep, that's kind of like intent level approach because we were working with user intents to sub token A and to token B under certain conditions and extract extra value out of it. We were not calling this intents back then, like uh, two years ago, but that's what it is now. And we see the future of DeFi with intents. So how big is this problem and the whole market? Right. So why is this something worth solving? Uh, yeah. So uh, quick answer would be, we think that this problem can be $1 trillion problem. Uh, right now, it, it, that's for the future. And if we take a look uh, at the last year, more than $1.5 trillion were swapped on decentralized exchanges. $1.5 trillion. And unfortunately, half of that were bots stealing money from retail users in the way we just described, like arbitrage and sand sandwich attacks, uh, MBU strategies on retail user transactions. And they were able to steal more than $1 billion. So that's uh, volumes we are, we are we having right now. If we compare it to traditional finance, the pa payment for the order flow is estimated at di in different years from $3 billion to $10 billion. So the ratio is kind of one, one to three, one to 10 MEV to payment for the order flow. But volumes in a thousand times slower than in traditional finance, which means there is like a thousand X opportunity for growth, especially this is combined with a MEV positive nature of blockchain and DeFi. In traditional finance, we have around 10 stock exchanges, uh, high liquidity stocks because there are like requirements for companies to go IPO. We have hundreds of DEXs, like up to thousands of DEXs and bridges, dozens of uh, blockchains, a lot of cross-domain communications. And all of that is based on thousands of tokens with low liquidity, which creates a tremendous opportunity for MEV and strategies like arbitrage and sandwich. Okay. Fascinating. Fascinating. Now, what does the market look like? Uh, how is the competition there versus what you guys are trying to do? How are you guys unique versus other competitors in the space? Because I know there are some other MEV products in the past and actually we've covered, I believe, at Eden Chain and others. So kind of speak to how you guys are very, very unique and what they're doing versus you guys. Sure. So firstly, we believe MEV space is not competitive enough as we have like uh, hundreds of decks of bridges, dozens of blockchains and only like around 10, 12 uh, MEV projects. And most of them are based on Ethereum. So Ethereum has the most MEV projects and the and MEV condition on Ethereum is the worst because almost uh, every time when there is a sandwich opportunity, users are getting sandwiched. And uh, regarding the com competitive la landscape, we are not competing directly with other MEV solutions. We, uh, we are actually encouraging uh, our community, our users to use other MEV solutions as well, like MEV Blocker or MEV Share or something like that. The reason is we, other MEV solutions, they are based on private APC. And as you may mentioned, Eden Network, which started in like 2021, uh, one of the like first uh, user facing private, private RPC MEV rebates. The first problem here is uh, the approach, which is like private RPC. This is really not the best user experience. It's impossible to explain to 100 million upcoming like uh, web series users, what is private RPC? And uh, so it's hard to convince users to put some private RPC into their wallet. And even if, if they do put this into their wallet, next time they go to Uniswap to execute the uh, swap of the B, they forget to use that custom RPC because humans are not designed to remember a lot of stuff. So uh, they kind of need to always to remember to switch to that custom RPC if, instead of standard endpoint to public mempool. So that's the first point, uh, how wall chain is different. We are not based on any private RPCs. We take action before the wallet. We are at intent level. So we, uh, we have a framework, which is like basically JavaScript SDK, which helps to structure the transaction in a certain way that it extracts MEV itself from, from the transaction it creates. And then it can go to any private RPC or to any, any mempool. It doesn't affect wall chain. So if users like uh, other MEV solutions, uh, we encourage them to use other MEV solutions uh, together to get mutual benefits. So the first point is user experience. Second point 
the amount of MEV rebate. We give uh, three times more uh, in the market average because we don't need to share value what we capture with third parties. We don't need to share it with validators or searchers like other MEV solutions do. And point number three is because we are fully application level, we are intent level, we are multi-chain from the start. We are not uh, based on any like ecosystem infrastructure, Ethereum infrastructure. We are fully application level. Uh, so we started with four EVM chains like BNB, Polygon, Ethereum, Telos, and we will be scaling it to other EVM chains like Arbitrum, Optimism, Avalanche, and so on. And we don't need any ecosystem support to do that. It just works uh, out of the box because uh, it's before the private RPC on top of that. Interesting. Okay, so what's the current user validation and traction uh, of the project? Sure. So uh, Wallchain has given back MEV to users in more than 21,000 transactions across different chains, and it's uh, actively growing. In total, it's almost 10,000 unique uh, users who have received MEV from Wallchain. That's traction we have uh, up to this date, and it's uh, multiple times more than other MEV solutions have combined paid to their uh, users. I'm actually going to pull up yeah. your website here. So like here you have an example of basically giving back almost $80 back to a user. And it says MEV bot wants to take this amount from you and basically a user can capture that value back to themselves. And I find this very, very fascinating, right? So you mentioned that you have a 100% MEV win, win rate. And I think that makes sense based on what you mentioned earlier about being put directly into the transaction by partnering directly with projects, right? And then here you mentioned that you've basically revoked over 19,000 MEV transactions, right? So very, very fascinating. Kind of uh, speak to that as well. Yeah, it's uh, already almost 22,000. If you scroll it down, we have kind of updated metrics dashboard, which will be uh, we will be publicly uh, soon. Yeah, if uh, someone wants to get more data from Volchain, let us know in the comments and we will extract the data for you. Yeah, so most of the data comes from our B2B integrations. So we have three vectors of growth. First vector is uh, B2B integrations with DEXs and protocols. So we go directly to QuickSwap, uh, PancakeSwap, other DEXs, integrate with them, launch and capture their MEVs that they create and give it back to their community, to, to their users. We also integrate in with wallets and we have our separate plugin, Wallchain plugin, which is a Chrome extension. With this Chrome extension, users will be able to use one of the popular wallets like MetaMask or Trust Wallet go to any major EVM chain, any protocol DEX aggregator, and capture MEV that they create using Wallchain. This is one, one plugin. It works automatically. You don't need to remember any private RPCs. If you want to remember private RPCs, you can do that, and you can enable it into your wallet. We are not competing with private RPCs. So uh, that's basically a universal approach that we're taking and uh, growing into a multi, multi-chain direction. Okay, that's very fascinating. So basically wallets, protocols, uh, DEXs, exchanges. So currently you said you had PancakeSwap or QuickSwap and... Uh, and uh... Yeah, we got live with QuickSwap like at the beginning of this year. Some of the, in, some of the integration is going to be announced uh, pretty soon. Okay. All right, that's awesome. So what's in store for Wildchain? What's coming up in your roadmap uh, as a project? Yeah, so we the, the, see the future of DeFi as cross-domain and uh, driven on intents, uh, which means like intent is an action that user wants to do, swap token A to token B, or do some uh, a perp, or mint an NFT, some kind of action. And uh, this action should be met under certain conditions. And there will be like market makers or other players in the system who will provide that uh, conditions to the user cross-domain. So this is the kind of intent that we are talking about. At Wallchain, we are building a meta intent layer. Uh, a meta intent is when user is doing something, swapping OPB, user action can create value to someone, to some trading firm, to some HFT, H HFT trading firm. And uh, the user would always want to get as much of that value back without reducing the value of his original transaction. So this is a meta intent that is present with every intent and every transaction. And we are building a meta intent pool with a decentralized intent flow auction. So we will be, it will be permissionless and decentralized. So everyone will have access to this flow of intents 
And if they see that they can get some value out of it, they they can they can get this value and share most of that value back with the user. So that's the most democratized ways that we see that value can be shared back with, with, with users. Does it? Uh, a little bit, honestly. Um, okay, now maybe kind of, could you maybe just kind of read sum that up again yeah so for example you want to swap token a to token b and you want to make it cross domain from ethereum to polygon or to bnb and uh, you kind of don't care what kind of smart contracts are used for it you just want to use some trustless cross domain providers like like d bridge uh, something like that so they will fulfill your intent to make this swap. but while you're doing this your transaction can go to mempool or some auction and bots or validators can extract value from your transaction. And th they will extract value from your transaction. And in last year, it was uh, more than $1 billion. And this number will, will grow dramatically in the upcoming years. 70% 70 70 of that value usually goes to validators. So the user always wants to get as much of the value he creates to the market, as much of that value back. It's basically like a free money. If I create $100 of profit for someone, why don't I get like 95 of that dollars back or 100 of that dollars back? So that's kind of a meta intent, which is always present okay. and is building a system to fulfill this meta intent for the user in every trade, in every intent uh, of the user action. Okay. So to actually kind of segue, because I, mean, I think this is basically very, very on topic on Twitter, this guy or this Twitter account became very, very famous, called Jared, the MEV bot. Uh, so kind of maybe share with the audience who Jared, the MEV bot is, and why Wallchain can help solve what Jared is taking advantage of. Yeah, so uh, Jared is taking advantage of uh, their order flow in, in the mempool and at MEV boost by Flashbots, and users are not getting uh, much of that value. And in case of Wallchain with meta intents, your users will get most of that millions that was extracted by Jared back in the same transactions that uh, they are executing their actions. So okay. so basically we will, this is what uh, Jared is doing and provide access to such uh, such kind of actions to more traders, more people who are curious in DeFi and want to extract extra value. And by doing this, we will give most of that value back to originators of transactions, which are users, protocols, and sometimes wallets. Okay, sounds good. Now, do you have maybe any partnerships you would like to share? the project has worked on or is working on? Yeah, we've, we have a, a lot to share. We just cannot share it now. We've recently announced integration with Meta Aggregator Zero. Uh, a huge announcement is coming by the end of this month. Recently, we graduated from Alliance DAO program. Thank you. It, it, was, it was really a life-changing experience for us. Yeah, so stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to our uh, cozy Telegram chat where we announce uh, all of our upgrades, all of our partnerships at the first place and that's where it all starts. Okay, and then speak to the the backers and investors in uh, Wallchain. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, raised a small round before. We we got Alliance DAO, uh, Orange DAO, range of other VCs that you have that you see on the screen. We also got a grant from BNB Chain and a range of angel investors, founders of wallets, DEXs, and meta aggregators. Uh, we also got into fundraising of the Alliance DAO demo day. I can share much of that info right now, but we are preparing a public announcement of that event as well. So stay tuned. Okay, that's awesome. Now, would you like to maybe kind of showcase uh, this MAV uh, project can work with an extension? I believe you have some kind of demo or video you'd like to sh showcase. Okay, so this is a demo of our Chrome extension. So basically users will be able to go to any VM chain, use one of the popular wallets. They can also, they're also free to use any sort of MEV solutions with that wallets like private RPCs. And uh, for example, here I go to Uniswap on Polygon. I pick two tokens to swap. And while my transaction is creating, Wallchain extension is analyzing the transaction and trying to predict what kind of MEV it will create. So here we predict that this transaction will create almost $12 of MEV. And this money will be captured by somebody at execution. And none of this money would usually go to the user. With our extension, we detect ahead how much MEV the transaction can create. We also simulate the transaction ahead. How much USDC is going to be taken from the user, what kind of, uh, and how much like giddy token user is going to get back. And we also simulate the MEV rebate that we will bring to the user. Here we see like extra $11.8 for the user. So 
we calculate MEV strategies behind our API and return it to the user. And on the client side, original user intent to swap token A to token B under certain conditions are combined with other, with our MEV strategies into one transaction. And then it, it is sent to the user, to the wallet, and from the wallet, it's sent to public mempool or to private RPC. And it's been executed as one transaction under one hash. So user can accept it and... Wait, I'm sorry. So, so this money is going is being sent back to the user? Yeah, so user is swapping USDC to some GD token. And there is some extra $11.8 generated for the user. Without this money, would be taken by bot. And with Volchain, we send them, uh, we send this $11 back to the user in the same transaction. Okay. Which then brings up the next question: What's the business model for Volchain? How do you guys make money? Are you taking part of that fees, or are there tokenomics or something to factor in? Yes, yeah, so we're taking a fee out of that. We are taking the smallest fee that is uh, available on the market. Uh, like other MEV solutions give around 15, 20% of MEV rebate. We are giving usually around 50%. And there are ways for us to grow this percentage that we can give back to the user. We want to make it uh, a DAO and uh, manage the treasury in decentralized uh, way and manage all of this like uh, percentage decision in a decentralized way. Okay, that's pretty cool. So in this example, basically, what about, you said 50% split between the user and, and uh, the project? Uh, yep. Okay. I mean, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I think any way to save money, uh, especially from MEV bots, is definitely a good way forward for crypto. Great. So where can people learn more about Wallchain, the project, or reach out? Yeah, so we have a website, wallchain.xyz. We have a cozy Telegram chat where we're discussing all of the stuff. Feel free to reach out. Happy to jump on the quick call with everyone who is interested. All right, awesome. Well, definitely a pleasure having you on, Yuri. Uh, great project, very, very fascinating. That being said, thanks for coming on to the 100X show. And as we like to say, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much, Yen. Thanks for having me here. Have a good one. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, we have even more content for you at Tokyo Metrics. Get there using the link down below. Oh, uh-huh.